everyone, welcome back. I am Dr. Alexandra Mayer. If you are new to my channel, this is a place for you if you wanna learn about all things women's hormones and aesthetics. Um, today's video, we're gonna be diving into a little bit on um, the metabolites of testosterone. So when we think about this, we're thinking about this in um, patients who have maybe symptoms of high testosterone, but their testosterone on labs is like completely normal, right? So a lot of PCOS women will experience this in polycystic ovary syndrome because their testosterone isn't always elevated, but they can have signs and symptoms of high testosterone, which we call hirsutism. So what does this look like? Well, it usually looks like acne, oily skin, hair growth, hair loss, or fertility issues. Um, and we often think about PCOS is being heavily insulin resistance dominated. So what that means is that there's a component of insulin resistance in a lot of PCOS patients, not all, um, but in a lot of PCOS patients. And that kind of helps to facilitate their symptoms and facilitate kind of the pathogenesis of what's going on. So when it comes down to it, right, serum testosterone doesn't always end up elevated even and doesn't always match symptoms. So what do we do in that if that's the case? What we do is we can run urine metabolites. Urine metabolites can tell us what pathway we're favoring. Are we favoring a 5-alpha reductase pathway or a 5-beta pathway? The 5-alpha reductase pathway is really the one we wanna talk about today because it does create testosterone that's about three to four times stronger than regular testosterone. And by stronger, I don't mean it in a good way, I mean it in like symptoms, right? So three to four times more symptoms than regular testosterone. When we think about this pathway, we think about this pathway in men with male pattern hair loss, right? Um, well, we should also think about it in women with male pattern hair loss. Um, oftentimes those women will be taking their testosterone down this pathway and creating more DHT down this 5-alpha reductase. So in women, we treat things differently, right? So in men, we might do something like add finasteride in if they had hair loss. But in women, especially in cycling women, that is definitely, definitely not a good option. So we need to come up with other solutions. Um, this is where we start to think about what really causes this, right? So there's a couple kind of hormonal lifestyle things that go on that definitely cause us to shift into this hormonal picture. One of those things is insulin. Higher levels of insulin increase 5-alpha reductase activity, um, which is oftentimes why we see that that correlation in polycystic ovary syndrome patients. But the other hormone that decreases 5-alpha reductase activity is progesterone, right? And in polycystic ovary syndrome patients, oftentimes these patients are having anovulatory cycles. We've talked about this in the past, right? Where when you ovulate, what's left behind is the corpus luteum and that's what actually creates progesterone. So in an anovulatory cycle, progesterone does tend to be lower, which then would not inhibit that 5-alpha reductase and would make our symptoms worse. So when we're thinking about PCOS patients, really, um, getting that insulin under control and getting patients ovulating is a really good first step. But if we want to go to the level of just supporting 5-alpha reductase or, well, reducing 5-alpha reductase, then there are some nutrients that we can think of. Reishi mushrooms have been shown to help with this. Zinc, specifically in combination with B6, has been shown to help with this. Um, salt palmetto is a great herb that, that has been shown to help with this. And then some of our fatty acids, right? So things like DHA specifically. So when we do an omega-3 fish oil supplement, right? Part of that's DHA and DHA has also been shown to help inhibit 5-alpha reductase activity and stop us from creating DHT. So in women, right, where maybe you are experiencing some, some polycystic ovary syndrome, um, like symptoms, acne, oily skin, hair growth, um, or in women maybe with hair loss, this is definitely something to consider because we want to inhibit this, this enzyme and see if we can get um, our symptoms managed while still creating balance in the underlying hormonal picture because that's what's really going to move us forward in the treatment plan. Um, what questions do you have? Put them in the comments below and we will see you soon for our next video.